my name is Shannon Burke. I am a certified functional manual therapist here in Maryland. That means I'm a physical therapist that specializes in working with her hands and treating people manually uh, to get them out of their pain and their chronic conditions. I specialize in the chronic pain and spine as well as concussions and headaches, migraines, and such. I also am the co-founder of a nonprofit called Just Empower Kids, where we provide holistic treatment to kids in cancer treatments. And that being the case, I also treat children. So I wanted to start by providing some information free to you guys around different disorders and diagnoses that maybe you can't get information from your primary care provider or a specialty provider right now because of the quarantine situation. So I'm trying to fill a need by giving you guys what I know and what I have researched. I am incessantly curious about why things are the way that they are and how to help in a way that uh, you guys would be able to do at home. So I wanted to just kind of give back in the way that I could, and this is the way. Today, I actually am going to be covering the topic called restless leg syndrome, or RLS. It is actually characterized by this uncontrollable urge to move because you have this uncomfortable sensation in your legs. Now, this seems pretty general, and there's lots of other sensations outside of restless leg syndrome that people can actually confuse this with. But a restless leg syndrome sensation that people would be describing wouldn't be numbness or necessarily pain. They usually say that it feels like a creeping or a crawling, an aching, an itching, it's boring. They just can't relieve it unless they move. And so people end up like jiggling their legs or uh, pacing or like they have to get up and move if they're laying in bed. And that being said, it usually does happen when they're laying down and they're resting or when they're sitting and watching TV at the end of the evening and they just get this sensation that they can't just sit still in their legs. It's almost like a body anxiety in their lower body. Now it can occur in other parts of your body, but for most part, it actually is in your legs. Because it does occur in the evening and at night, there's a lot of people that develop insomnia. And insomnia over the course of a long time can actually lead to depression because our bodies actually need sleep in order to heal. And getting into that deep sleep repairs all of our, our tissues. It also uh, helps to regulate all of our hormonal levels. And if the hormone levels are off, then you can develop some sort of mood issue. So you really wanna make sure that you take care of the restless leg syndrome if it's causing you to be sleepless. So the restless leg syndrome can actually be a result of some things and not necessarily independent in its course. So. If it is the result of something, you actually do have to treat the underlying cause. Some of the underlying causes that can lead to someone having restless leg syndrome are things like diabetes and a peripheral neuropathy or nerve, nerve issues in their legs or in their arms. Um, someone with a kidney issue, kidney disorders, uh, someone with spinal issues, uh, disc herniations, uh, stenosis, arthritis in the spine. Uh, as well as iron deficiencies can cause restless leg syndrome. So you really have to do treat the underlying causes. You can't just always treat the symptoms. So if you can't find the underlying causes or you don't have an underlying cause that you know of, then this would be appropriate treatments or interventions for you to try. So the first thing that you want to do is try to establish a good sleep routine. Now, a good sleep routine or good sleep habits uh, would consist of no smoking, no nicotine, no alcohol, no caffeine close to bedtime, eating a couple hours before bed so that your body is actually willing to start to rest instead of digest. You want to um, maybe have some calming music, turn off your electronics, having lower light, uh, dimmer light actually signals your body that it's time to calm down because our nervous system is geared towards being awake with bright light and being asleep with low light or no light. That's just how our bodies work. So dimming the lights help. Um, uh, having some sort of reading materials that maybe calm you or um, don't get you thinking too much. Something fun 
Um, so that's something that would be like a good sleep routine. You also want to make sure that you are getting some moderate level activity on a regular basis. Our bodies need to have that movement in order to function properly and for our bodies to like know when it's time to shut down, when it's time to rest. So if we're always resting, if we're never moving, then it just doesn't have any up and down to the regulation of our movement patterns and therefore the stimulation into our brain. Some people relate restless leg syndrome to weak veins. Now veins are actually the blood vessels that bring all of the blood that's used up basically back to our heart. And the arteries are the blood vessels that take it out of our heart. Now our heart is the pump to get it out into our extremities. And the veins have to bring it back, but the way that they get it back is through muscle movement. So if you are moving less, then you actually have less of a pump to bring all of that blood flow back to your heart. So the veins over time become weak. Um, the way that they do that is they're these valves. They're kind of like stoppages. So the blood comes up into the vein and it can't backflow down into your legs because there's a, a valve. And over time, those valves actually become a little bit weaker. So you have blood pooling in your legs. And if you have blood pulling in your legs, it's going to be extremely uncomfortable. So some people actually relate the weak veins to the restless leg syndrome. The way that you could counteract that is not just with movement, but with a light compression stocking, which you can get at a local drugstore. That will assist the, bl the blood flow to actually stay up and assist it in moving up without you actually moving. There is a theory that magnesium can actually help with restless leg syndrome as well. Now, magnesium is a naturally occurring substance that we need in order to block calcium. If calcium is not blocked by magnesium in a regulatory state, then the calcium will actually overactivate the nerves and trigger muscle contractions. So magnesium kind of counteracts all of that and is a natural muscle relaxer. Magnesium is actually uh, the active ingredient in Epsom salts. So when your grandmother told you to take an Epsom salts bath, she was kind of on point because it actually does relax you uh, in a chemical kind of way, not just in a soothing bath kind of way. So with restless leg syndrome, you can take an Epsom salts bath. You can also supplement with a magnesium supplement. Now you want to make sure that you do check with your physician because magnesium, if you take too much, can actually cause nausea, um, some diarrhea, upset stomach, um, and it actually can counteract some other medications. So you want to just make sure that there's no counter counterindications for magnesium with what you're taking if you are taking something. And the other stipulation around a magnesium supplement is that the majority of the supplements that you would find like um, in the pharmacy or Walmart or Target are actually magnesium oxide. It's cheaper to produce, um, but it's actually processed less efficiently in your, in your body. So uh, magnesium citrate, C-I-T-R-A-T, magnesium citrate, is actually the more uh, efficient form for your body. So that's what I take. The next tip is valerian root. Valerian root is actually an herbal supplement and herbal supplements are actually not regulated by the FDA. So just to give that little tip. Valerian root actually inhibits the breakdown of GABA. Now GABA is a chemical messenger that naturally is in your body that regulates your nerve impulses and your nervous system. And when you have low levels of GABA, then you actually will experience anxiety and poor sleep. So uh, valerian root is actually considered nature's Valium because it kind of acts in the same way that Valium would on your nervous system. So a valerian root supplement is also effective in uh, treating the restless leg syndrome. And again, I'm just saying it's not regulated. Something else that I really love is something physical to do. So, because 
hey, I'm a physical therapist. <laughs> so doing something from the yoga tradition called legs up the wall, where you basically do just like it sounds. You lay on the floor right up against the wall and your butt is kind of at that 90 degree mark and your legs are straight up the wall. And what that does is it actually relaxes your spine and it relaxes the muscles in your pelvis. And there is a theory that, you know, your lumbar spine is actually, or your low back is actually influencing the nerves that are going down your legs and therefore relaxing your spine and all of the muscles in your pelvis would influence the sensations in your legs. It's really great to do for like five minutes right before bed and it relaxes your nervous system and all of the muscles in your lower body. So, you know, give it a try. If you can't get on the floor and put your legs up the wall, then you can actually simulate this by putting a bunch of pillows underneath your knees and trying to get your pelvis as close to that 90 degree angle as possible. It will still help your pelvis and your back and hopefully your restless leg syndrome. So now we have an acupuncture point or an acupressure point. It's called the GB20. It is actually where your head and your spine meet. It is thought that if you massage it or you press it for two to three minutes, that it will assist in sleep quality uh, and relaxation and possibly with restless leg syndrome. The way that you would find it is that you would clasp your hands and you would place them on the back of your head and right about where your thumbs hit is where the GB20 point is. So it would be about here. And you would massage that point for a couple of minutes. So you can also use essential oils. There's a variety of them that may be helpful and you can research it if you'd like, but some of the ones are things like peppermint oil or jasmine oil or lavender oil. And lavender is known to be a relaxation type of essential oil. Uh, my favorite is actually something I've been using called uh, frankincense and myrrh. You might remember that from the Bible. Um, so frankincense is actually a natural muscle relaxer and the blend of the frankincense and the myrrh actually helps with not only muscle relaxation, but with pain relief and neuropathy. And restless leg syndrome has been categorized as a neuropathy or nerve-related problem. And so this can actually help. Now, the way that you'd use it is that you would not just put it on your legs, but you can actually put it on the palms of your hands, on the bottom of your feet, in your belly button. Those are actually really great absorption places so your body gets it really quick. Um, you can put it on your legs because that's what's restless. Uh, you can also put it um, in your groin. Now there is a line between your pelvic bones, uh, between your hip bone and your and your pelvic bone um, that your it's called the inguinal area where inguinal hernias would occur. So that area actually, if you put it there, can assist with the nerves that go down your legs because that's where a lot of them come from is in that area. The last thing is folk remedies. Now these are the things that people have handed down generation upon generation with not much of an explanation as to why it works, but they do, and so they keep getting handed down. The first one is tonic water for restless leg syndrome. So drinking four to six ounces of tonic water before bedtime is supposed to help. If it does, and you guys try it, please come back and let me know. I'd love to know if it's efficient and effective. The next one boggles my brain because at least I can kind of get down with the tonic water and there's substances in there that might, you know, minerals and stuff that, that might help your body. But this one, crazy. A bar of soap underneath your bed covers is supposed to help with restless leg syndrome. Now I have a natural made, a friend made it, um, bar of soap. This has lavender essential oil in it. So maybe we got a two for one. Uh, but 
putting it underneath your bed covers before you go to sleep is supposed to help you sleep a bar of soap. Like again, I would love to know if it helps really. Um, and maybe other people that are watching the video would like to know too. So please come back and give us some feedback if so. It's like our own little research. So those are my tips and tricks for restless leg syndrome. I hope that they help you and then that you get some relief from some of them. I hope that it gives you some options in the time when the options are kind of low right now. I hope that everybody stays well and that they stay healthy. I want to say a big thank you to anyone on the front lines and anyone who is loving somebody that's on the front lines. Thank you for your sacrifice. I hope that everybody is finding their gifts and their skills and giving back as well because that's really what it's all about. Be well, everyone.